All right, hey there, fellow coders. Uh, welcome back again to this series where we're gonna be diving into how to create a real world Java web application from scratch. In this uh, lesson, we're gonna be looking at how to take our GitHub repository that we just created in the last video and bring it into our project. Now, what I basically uh, always do is I create the project first in terms of the code, and then I take that code and I associate it with the uh, clone, the GitHub clone URL um, that we have access to. Okay, so first we create the code, the initial code base, and then we associate that code base to the GitHub repository. So, in because I'm using Spring Tool Suite, I can say file new Spring Starter Project to create a new Spring Boot application, which is what we're going to be leveraging to uh, build our web application. Um, if you don't have a Spring Tool Suite, you can go to I believe it's start dot spring dot io and you can essentially do more or less the same thing that i'm doing here okay uh, you'll be able to generate a project you'll get a zip file and then with that file you can create a project um, i'm assuming it comes with a uh, a palm file or something that you can make it easily uh, exportable uh, into your uh, ide of choice but you know that's the benefit of using spring spring tool suite is it's built right in you can say file new spring starter project so i'll do that I have already apparently done my uh, my default, so the name of the project is Fresh Votes. Um, I'm packaging it as a WAR file because I want to be able to eventually deploy it to an AWS server, and it's just easier to package as a WAR. Uh, although I've heard the later, uh, latest and greatest in terms of uh, creating uh, pa uh, projects and stuff, they they prefer JAR versus WAR. Um, why? I'm not exactly sure yet. Uh, WARs have always worked just perfectly fine for me. Um, but anyway, that's why I'm going to be leveraging that. Uh, Java version, I'm using version 8. Uh, although I think I could go to 10. Yeah, but 10 doesn't excite me that much in terms of the features that it, that it unlocks. Um, so I'm just sticking with 8. Okay, the group is typically whatever domain it's going to be published on. So for, for example, freshvotes.com, you would take it put it backwards, that's why the group is backwards. You do com.freshvotes, because it's going to be on freshvotes.com, you get the idea. Uh, call it whatever you like for the artifact, whatever version you like, whatever description you like, and typically the package tends to go along with the group. Um, yeah, so there you go, I'm gonna click on next, and then I'm going to uh, bring in the sort of the technologies that I want to include as a part of this um, application. Now, uh, for you, you can probably use the search box to search for all this stuff, but I've already searched for it and, and used it before, so it's in my frequently used. Uh, I'm gonna use dev tools, which allows me to, um, it sort of reboots the server whenever it detects changes. Uh, it's just helpful, you know, so you don't have to manually reboot yourself. Uh, JPA, this is uh, the Java Persistence Annotations, or API, I should say. Uh, Java Persistence API allows us to uh, connect to a uh, database easily with Java code. So that's we're going to be leveraging that very soon, uh, building out our entities and whatnot. Uh, MySQL is essentially just bringing in the uh, the database driver so that it can connect to a MySQL database that you'll need to have installed on your computer. Uh, but it does support other um, SQL versions we have. Uh, well, a whole bunch. So you see all the different versions, uh, SQL databases that it supports. I use MySQL because one, I'm familiar with it, and two, it's free, and three, there's a whole bunch of support for it already on the internet. And um, it, it's, ne it's never served me or ill ill advised me, or what's the word I'm looking for? It has never done me wrong. So uh, there you go. Uh, Spring Security will be used to um, do authorization and authentication, which really just means username and password stuff. Okay, so that's what Spring Security is all about. Timeleaf allows me to not use JSPs. Uh, JSPs are sort of going away. They're sort of a thing of a pat the past now. Um, Timeleaf is a templating engine that allows us to leverage HTML, so pure HTML, um, in such a way that you could work with a designer very easily. Uh, working with a designer in the past with JSPs requires the designer to have a web server environment set up, and, and generally designers don't want to be um, messing around with Java web servers and stuff. They just want to work with pure HTML and CSS, and that's what Timeleaf enables you to do. Uh, and then web, this is essentially um, allowing you to bring in all the web stuff, so web MVC, uh, controllers uh, with models and views and whatnot. Um, and that is something we'll be diving into later, but that's a very, you know, that's essentially the spring framework. Um, and also obviously being able to uh, build out rest services and so on and so forth. So that's very helpful stuff. So I'm gonna click on finish and it's going to create my project. So this just basically creates the entire 
uh, project structure inside of my IDE, um, and it gets it up and running uh, so that, you know, as you can see here, it brings in the um, uh, application, which uses the Spring Boot application annotation. Uh, it brings in a servlet initializer to do all the good stuff that it needs to do. It brings in a, um, a test um, directory as well. That's a source directory, so we can actually, uh, this is going to run um, actual uh, integration tests and so on and so forth. So that's, just, you know, it just sets up our, our project structure so that we're sort of ready to go uh, out of the gate. So now we need to um, do that second part, which is tying it in with an actual, um, which we call it the, uh, the GitHub uh, repository that we had. So let's go ahead and, uh, and plug that, or I'll show you how you can plug that in uh, with the uh, Spring Tool Suite. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna right click, you're gonna go to team, you're gonna go to share project. And then, um, oh, I need to, do, shoot, I forgot one step. Can I just create the repository from here? No, I can't. So sorry, go back. We need to go to the GitHub or the Git view, which is available if you don't have it already. It's available in window. You go to show view, you go to other, and just type in Git. Okay, and that'll show you the Git repositories view. So you can go to Git repositories. I have a bunch already, but don't worry about that. Um, go to the uh, your GitHub, copy your um, download URL, and then you just paste it right into the Git repository. So I right click and say paste, and then it fills everything out for you. If you need to, you fill out your user authentication information for GitHub. This is your GitHub login information. I'll say next. And I'm just bringing in the master branch because that's the only branch that's been created. I'll explain branches in a future episode. And I will say finish. Um, so that will bring that into my list of Git repositories. Now I can go and right click on the package, uh, say team, share project, and then I can select, uh, where to go, fresh votes from the repository list and say finish. Okay, so there you go. Now I've associated it with that repository. So now it's obviously detected a bunch of changes uh, because the repository is blank, but yet what we have here is not blank. So for the initial check-in stuff, I, I'll use the uh, IDE's built-in um, team viewer stuff to commit the changes. So if I right-click, I just do again, right-click team, then you click commit. Um, you have your uh, changes that you can see that are unstaged in your list. Um, this is kind of a, it's kind of really annoying to use this built-in uh, view. I would ref I'd recommend that you use a different uh, tool and I'll get to that different tool in um, a, a future episode as well. But for now, I'm just gonna pick and choose the files that I know I want to uh, include in my project. Okay, and so basically what I'm doing here is I'm selecting uh, pretty much any file that's not in a strange directory. Uh, so this one actually isn't a strange, it's in a target directory. I wouldn't include anything in a target uh, directory. Um, and I wouldn't include anything, uh, I don't anyway, that, that has the .mvn or .anything. So, um, and I usually also don't include the, the git ignore, but you could, you could include the git ignore if you like. Um, anyway. So this basically, I've done this so many times that I can just go through this and know uh, exactly what it is that I want by looking at it. Uh, let's see, I've already got a Palm XML. Why is this one in a different, oh, it's in a target and then this one. So I'm gonna essentially click on all these and say uh, add to index, okay? And then I'm gonna scan through here again. And this is, like I said, this is why this is annoying. It's, it's not a very good, um, uh, UI to do this stuff. So uh, I would highly recommend a, a, an external uh, application called, I think it's called Source Tree. Is that what I have open here? Yeah, Source Tree. That's what I'll get into in a future video. Um, but I think that's enough for now. So I've staged those files. So now I can uh, put in a message about how to commit these files to GitHub. I want to commit and push them to my repository. I'll just call this the initial check in of the fresh votes code and I'm gonna commit and push. The difference between commit and commit and push is that commit sort of saves the uh, information, the, the, the Git hub or the Git uh, information that you are going to, going to eventually push. It's gonna save that information. It's gonna save the commit mes message. It's gonna get everything ready to rock for you, but it's not actually gonna push it. It's not actually gonna send it over the, into uh, the cloud and it's not gonna store it in the cloud it's still gonna be stored locally. So um, uh, I usually just do commit and push. 
Um, but anyway, I'll get into that more information as to the difference between the two and when you would use a different, uh, the, the either one, um, again, in a future episode. For now, since we're the only ones working on this repository and we're, um, we're just getting started, commit and push is perfectly fine. So I'll commit and push and it should do everything that it needs to, to send it into the, um, into the web and it, it has so there you go it says done so now i can close it and i can go over to my github uh, web interface refresh and i will see that fresh votes is now in there and i see my initial check-in um was the last commit 16 seconds ago so there you go now we've got our um our, our code base here associated with um the master branch of the fresh votes GitHub repository, which is great. And we've actually checked in our changes and pushed them into um, onto the internet. So we actually have our changes there. So now other people can check it out like yourself. Um, I guess I'll include um, information on how to check that out uh, in something either below or above this video. I'll have some uh, information on how to do that. So there you go. Cool. Now we can move on to the next video where we're going to, uh, I guess, get into the creation of entities. Uh, and then I'll probably talk more either in that video or the next one on um, how to use source tree to do all this GitHub version control stuff. Sound good? So looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care of yourself. Happy learning. Bye for now.